But the way 6th Street is, is like the Comedy Mothership and the Sunset Strip are the two main comedy clubs and they bookend the street. And there's like the Vulcan, there's the Creek in the Cave. Creek in the Cave is off of 6th Street. From my observation of Banana Phone, it just feels like a bunch of people with repressed thoughts and, 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 yeah, and right? anger and depression and shit yeah. that get a chance to take you know that out on there somebody was... else. You know what I was really impressed by? The audio. It was so perfect for comedy. And some of those ones are first come for serve. Yo, this is what Joe Rogan has done for comedy in Austin. Talking to some of the comics and asking them what the scene was like before he showed up. Yep. And then, and then what it's like after. Like Dubs was talking about this too. But it's like, it has created its own ecosystem to the point where, so the, and we'll take you down 6th Street and show you some of these clubs or show you at least all, like, all of them from the front. You can't bring any cameras or anything yep. like that in there. But the way 6th Street is, is like the Comedy Mothership and the Sunset Strip are the two main comedy clubs and they bookend the street. And there's like the Vulcan, there's the Creek in the Cave. Creek in the Cave is off of 6th Street, but it's like around bars. the corner. Yep. And there's a couple bars that also do comedy shows now yeah. because this is the new mecca of comedy. So yep. what, what happens is the shows are scheduled in such a way that when one show ends, the other show is also ending at the other major club. And then all the people that leave those major clubs are still so thirsty for comedy that they end up running into the other locations. So, so like the ecosystem is so healthy that once one comedy show lets out, the other comedy shows fill up. Mm -hmm. Which is insane to me, bro. Like, like I wish Toronto had a street that was dedicated to comedy like that. I, literally, the whole, the whole area is just like supporting the mothership ecosystem no the mothership is supporting that no, whole no, no yes <laughs> my bad i have it backwards but it's like everything is eating off of that like yeah. even the convenience store like we went and bought waters and if it weren't for the mothership they wouldn't have got our water money you know what i mean and your keychain money from what i hear though sixth street was always the popping street out here but like not if you if you ever come out here by the way uh sixth street on thursday friday Saturday, Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. They, they actually block off the streets so you can't drive down mm -hmm. after a certain hour. And it is, it looks like Vegas. In a way, yeah. Like, it just looks like complete chaos and mayhem. Is yeah. that the dog? Yeah. Maya. Hey, what's up, girl? Maybe she went inside. Maybe. Oh. Hey, come here, girl. You want a nice little cameo on the podcast? Come here. Oh, you're stretching out. Say hello to Maya, everybody. Our nice little comedy companion out here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, bro, it's just interesting to see like a whole economy being built out of just purely comedy. Obviously, it's Joe Rogan, so this guy's the biggest name going right now. 100%. And the mothership is locked down. A locked down. Locked down. And from the stories that we hear, too, it's like even, even top names... Like, unless you're vetted by the mothership, you really ain't going anywhere. No green rooms, no... You no, can't nothing. go hang out. Like, the no. comics were hanging out in the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are the established comics for the mothership. So, mm. if, if you're just trying to go in and check it out, it's... Mm -mm. You can't just walk around. No. You can't go in and walk you around. You can't even go in without a ticket. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't just go in and walk around. Like, it, was, it was very interesting. Um, then we went to the creek in the cave yesterday. Yep. So we didn't get on the, the open mic at, at the mothership, but we checked it out. Gorgeous room. Like for a little cabaret space. Yeah. I mean, it's built for comedy. Of course. Right? So like, it's, it's going to be set up nice. Like, I like the black curtains. I don't know why. It crushed, helps. Like crushed it, velvet black curtains. It's like a it's like a dark blueberry, dark blackberry, like Ooh. black. You know what I mean? I'm like, like yo, fuck a red curtain, bro. Like put this. Yeah, snazzy. but that's that's what I'm saying. Like these guys, because Rogan has been doing mics all over the world. Yeah. Thirty years, he knows what a good comedy room is, and when you get to design, like I want to build the perfect room. Yeah. You know what I was really impressed by the audio. It was so perfect for comedy but once again i know of course of course that he's gonna do that i was just i was just taking every little part and i was looking at the racks like the lighting yep and how they set that like bruh it, we haven't even seen 
The Fat Man. No. I don't even know if we will get to. Because all these shows are sold the F out. Yeah, and Kill Tony might be sold out. Not might be, bro. That shit sells out months in advance. I They're know. They're selling for two months from now. I, they just but, released the but, tickets for two months people, from now. We just got to hope some people no show. So you do want to go into standby tonight? We're going to sign up for Kill Tony tonight. Today is Monday. We're recording this on a Monday. Yep. Um, so by next week, you'll know if we get on or not. Cross, cross your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even if not, bro, like... Because um, there's still a bunch to do. Like, there's going to be, like, ten other mics in the area. Just... And it's funny, it's because those mics only pop up for the people that don't make it on the Comedy Mothership mic. Yeah. So it's like, there's, like, maybe 200 people in the line. Only 16 of them made it. Yeah. And then you see all those same people at Creek in the Cave, at... Da, 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 da. You just see and it's them. just funny to see all the Kill Tony like regulars like just walking like Uncle Laser just walking. Yeah, the street that's so and stuff. It was so weird. Like he's like yeah. just like licking his lips. Like, um, what was I gonna say? A good point that you made is that these other rooms exist because of the spillover. Yeah. But what's crazier to me is that even those spillover shows are sold out. Yeah, even the mics. because because the audience has spillover too. Yeah, it's not just the people comi- that can't get in. Exactly, the tickets are all sold out of the mothership, but you're there and you want to see some comedy, mm-hmm. and most likely you're gonna see the same people that you would have seen at the mothership anyways. Maybe not like the, like Tony Rock was headlining uh, this weekend at the mothership. He yep. flew out today. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we could have actually seen that show yesterday because the Sunday show wasn't sold out. We could have, but we decided to go to the mic instead. Yeah. Right, yeah. because that was a later show. Yeah. And then uh, we ended up going to the Creek in the Cave afterwards for uh, Banana Phone open mic. Yeah, which is wild. Banana Phone is similar in style to Kill Tony. It's a bucket pull. Um, you get one minute uninterrupted. But the difference here is after that one minute, they ring a little cowbell. And everybody from the comics to the audience just roast you. Yeah. Um, and you can roast them back. Like the comics on stage can also roast back. Yeah. But that was absolute fucking mayhem. Yeah, that was fun. That was a like, fun show. I think the majority of that audience was comics, though. It seemed, but that's it's, what I'm saying because there's so much spillover. Like from that, they didn't make the open mic, so they just everyone just chills at the creek. Yeah. At least I would say at least thirty percent, forty percent were comics. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you even have the comics that are regulars at the banana phone so they're just yelling stuff out and like they like oh Mohammed like and he's like oh why are you in the dark corner I can only see teeth like they literally say that every week <laughs> I can't lie I feel like this is just my from my observation of banana phone it just feels like a bunch of people with repressed thoughts and 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 yeah and anger and depression and shit yeah that get a chance to take you know, that out on was, somebody else there was a lot of women like just screaming like unfunny shit <laughs> though who's that who's that lady that could hey, 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 she just kept whispering i think that's bro an act, shut bro. the fuck up you're mild all your shit is <laughs> not only is she mild but her temperament is mild as well like she does like for those she does like the the anime like like oh, you're loud talking, I know, right? You're I'm not scared, trying to move, scaring the shit out. But she me. does like that, like she's trying to do that whole thing, and she talks like she's in an anime, like an anime girl. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But she's like a 40 year old black woman. Like <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was absolute. Like it was a madhouse. Yeah, that's the best way I could put it. Like it's Mad Max the comedy show. Met a bunch of cool people there. Uh, there's Met Lamizi. Shout out Lemare. Hey Lemare. Yeah. Um, and a bunch of weirdos, bro. <laughs> There's just so, so many comics here, and the majority of them, the majority of them are, are micers, open micers, that yeah. are like months to a year to a couple years in. Yeah. I would say, yeah, the majority of the m- comics are under four years. Yeah. If there's a piece of advice that I could give you, if you're thinking about coming to Austin, and, and you can only do it so often or whatever... Try and have some time under you. Like, try and already have been established where you are. Have at least a solid five minutes. Minimum. Yeah. Like, minimum. You need... Bare minimum. You need a solid one minute, a solid three Three minutes, minutes and and a solid solid five. five. So if you have the five, then you can break that down. Exactly. Because 
you will stand out yep way more than the comics that came here and started here yeah you know and, and even like some of the the open mics that we saw um at the creek yeah it seems like they're regular like they're there regularly yeah and they're mild you know what i mean like the one dude's like I think banana head should be an insult. Like that dude bombed twice. <laughs> he bombed on the open mic and then on the banana show. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're sitting there like twiddling our fucking thumbs. I'm like, nigga, give me an opportunity. <laughs> um, but I think the OG is actually going to help with that. We'll see, bro. I, I got no expectations. Yep. We're just here on comedy vacation, making the absolute best of it. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, in, in the three full days... Today will be the fourth. This has already been the greatest thing to happen in my comedy life mm -hmm. in the last, like since, since I really started feeling decent on stage, mm. which is like seven years ago. But I, I really only got like headline good in the last two to three years. Yeah, you, you're, you said that basically after you did your special. That's when you're like, okay, I think I'm I've, in a new gear now. Yeah. And, yeah. and bro, the clickups have been crazy, but I, I feel like out here now, we're actually putting that... We've been putting it to the test, but in a way that counts more. Yep. In a way that matters more. And, and in a way where something might actually happen now. Mm. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Bro, I, I'm going to say this again. Nothing, nothing you do in Canadian comedy means shit. Yep. I promise you. Not oh, but I'm on TV. Shut the fuck up. You're on CBC. <laughs> oh, but I got a special. Shut the fuck up. You got a special on a Canadian fucking streaming platform. Oh, but I headline. Shut the fuck up. You headline Canadian clubs. Nobody knows you. Nobody gives a fuck. Once you get out and actually see the shit for what it is, you're like, oh my God. You know what I think will happen though, too? What? Because the whole point of the mothership, like, he... Oh, here's some dragonflies. Yeah. Dragon. Um, so, you know how Rogan is friends with Eddie Bravo, right? Yeah. And he has his jujitsu schools. Jujitsu. Jujitsu schools. But he has a home base, an HQ. Yeah. And then he has satellite gyms all over the freaking world. That's what Joe wants to do with the mothership as well. So once this is up and running, they open one satellite in Toronto, three more clubs are gonna go up on the same street, and then I think same it, thing will happen. the same thing will happen. So he's trying to essentially franchise it. Or not franchise, he'll own them all, I'm sure. Yeah. That, was the, have, has he stated this publicly? He stated this, yep. That's why it's called the mothership, because the mothership has all the other spaceships on it. And then they're gonna all be satellite clubs. Exactly. So they'll be the comedy satellite. I don't know, what, but you Bruh, know what I mean? Uh, uh, He's, uh, he said this before, so. But, what, but does he go to Canada? He puts one in Toronto. Eventually. There's, bro, I'm telling you, there's at least. Yo, three, I'm, I'm with you. I'm putting that three, out in the ether. There's three 10th Planet gyms in, like, in Ontario alone that I've seen, which is Eddie Bravo's gym, and there's yeah. Jiu Jitsu. Where is it? In Toronto? One of them's a Tobacco, like they're around. I don't know exactly, but I know one of them I see off the 401 and on like a Tobacco. Okay. But they're all, all over the place. You know what I mean? So I think he wants to do that same model with the mothership. Like now that he sees like, okay, this is a proof of concept. It's like a chain of clubs. Exactly. He'll have to be strategic with the markets. I wonder where the second one would be. Imagine he goes to LA. I wonder how like the store and all of them would feel about that. They would love it because then people are going to go back. Mmm, good point. Yeah, mass exodus from L.A. Yeah. Apparently, like, I, was, I was talking to some of the comics and they're saying now it's easier to get spots in L.A. than it is in Austin. Yeah, because there's not that many comics But there. L.A. used to be the exclusive spot where it's like you can't break in here. Yep. It's like, oh, Luke Lindell, uh, Toronto comedian, is out in L.A. right now crushing, doing the fucking Hollywood improv like every day, bro. Like, shout out to Luke. This is Black Zeus, the podcast season five. 
I love y'all. Thank you for supporting. Once again, the Patreon is launched. If you do want to watch my comedy special right now, you can do so. It's only 10 bucks, and you can get it as part of the subscription fee. So, like, if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can get it that way, or you can just buy it outright for 10 bucks that way. Once again, for transparency, I will release the comedy special for free on the YouTube once we hit 1,000 subscribers. So you can also just hit the subscriber uh, button and just do that. You can support that way, whichever way you want to support. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all that. I don't necessarily use it the way everybody else does, but I'm there if you want to find me. AKA Black Zeus is the person to find on those platforms.